Welcome back to Man I'm Crossing here at New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, as you see what's going on on the lovely island of Von Hollow today, as I just sort of fumble over words. Um, so, uh, wait, hold on. Has a bit of a new Let's Play has come out today, hasn't it? I, bet, I believe so, I believe so. Let me see. Let me, oh, there we go. Oh, Marty. Family Alert Time Lapse has been published. Apparently, I gained plus five subscribers in the last 28 days. Who knows doing what? Um, there we go. Go go watch your Mari series. The first episode will probably be out by now. Yes, it will. Uh, most certainly will be out by now by the time this video is uploaded. And yeah, you can sort of watch me fumble around that game because you know it's it's a rare game where I literally went in knowing nothing about the game except for I think it was story based and I, I think it was an RPG. But that was about it. But anyway, hello there, everyone. Right now, four hundred. It's four twenty-two p.m. on Thursday, August fourth, twenty twenty-two. Um, I said my piece and. Uh, my, my piece and my thoughts about um, spoilers beforehand. Um, I, I cannot remember what episode. It's probably just called spoilers or something. Oh, spoiler alert. I bet, I bet that's what it's called. And if I was to guess, I'm going to guess it's episode ooh, 632. Uh, I don't know if that's right. But, um, yeah, so my bits and pieces about spoilers before. I don't really mind about spoilers. I, I think um, what's more important is not necessarily the actual... You know, it, it's kind of like sort of... Um, half and half where like yeah I do, I do think the destination is quite important in this story but the journey is also you know equally important and a lot of the times you know when you hear a spoiler for something a lot of the time I'm left wondering how does it get to that point and that curiosity in itself sort of spurns the enjoyment of watching the show in the first place and sometimes you know <laughs> it doesn't happen particularly often but you might misinterpret what a spoiler means and then by the time it um comes around to the actual spoiler part itself you your expectations are once again subverted where you're like well I can't believe that happened. Like that happened when I watched um, Pitch Perfect because I had read Pitch Perfect's like summary before. I don't, I don't remember why or what for whatever reason I did. But then like I watched it at one of my friend's house. And spoilers for Pitch Perfect, but it is quite an old movie at this point. Um, when I read the summary, I misinterpreted what the summary meant. It, it wasn't a particularly great summary, I don't think, but it was a short one. But I thought it meant that the Bellas lost the national finals to um, the Troublemakers. So when it actually came to their finals and they had like an absolutely amazing, ridiculously awesome performance, I was like, how on earth does this lose? And when it gets to be the sort of like epilogue part where it's shown that the Bellas do win, I'm just like, uh, <laughs> I remember being very confused and being like, wait, did they win? And then my friends just sort of like look at me and be like, are you an idiot? <laughs> yeah, of course they won. I was like, for some reason, you know, <laughs> obviously I didn't want to be like, oh, you know, I'd, I've read the movie plot of this before. Um, so sorry if you're that friend who <laughs> I watched Pitch Perfect with. Um, and then the truth comes out, you know, like eight years later or something. Um, uh, uh, I thought the, the plot was that they were going to lose and then uh, they didn't. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, honestly better because they definitely should have won. They had an amazing final performance. But anyway, yeah. Um, so poor slippers. I don't even know what those are, but we'll put those away. Oh, you know, they're probably it's probably the animal mascot um, things. And we'll also put the rainbow fish away because I don't think we have a rainbow fish um, model. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, he was going to say, oh yes, um, because the Omori, the new Let's Play, has started today. Uh, it, it is a very rare game where somehow, some, I have no idea how, I found out literally nothing about Ori, uh, Omori before I played it. Extent of my knowledge is, I thought it was a Japanese game, it doesn't seem like it was a Japanese game, it just, you know, has a Japanese title. <laughs> um, because I, I saw on the Steam page, I was like, oh, now announcing it's been translated to Japanese. I was like, that's pretty cool. Um, I knew... I was like 90% sure it was story based. I, I could have been subverted, but I was 90% sure it was story based and I was like pretty sure it was an RPG and that was basically all I knew about it. And even, um, and yeah, and <laughs> even that I only found out when I was making a thumbnail art for, uh, for itself when I was basically looking up, um, I was trying to find, um, what should I call it? I was trying to find uh, reference pieces of art and like like the art style and, and trying to replicate it and that sort of thing. I was trying to figure out what exactly I, sh I should be doing for the thumbnail art in that case. Um, I mean, even then, through um, looking up represent references of thumbnail art, I got the slightest hint that there's something like sort of underlying, like some sort of like not negativity, but it, it goes in, it goes very dark. Is like the sort of vibe I got from seeing like some of the, some of the things like um in reference to Amori, so it was like, that's basically the entire thing I knew about it. And even now I don't really know anything about it, so you know, if you've played it before, you know, uh, well I mean, I, I, I would I would like if you didn't spoil it for me, but you know, if you do spoil it for me, I'm not gonna like, be incredibly upset or anything, I'm just gonna be like, oh okay, <laughs> alright then, it's just, just a bit random, but you know, most people sort of abide by those rules, you know, and don't spoil things for people if they haven't seen it yet. 
Um, so yeah, I'm excited to play it. Um, and I like its vibe so far. It's got some. It definitely has some sort of like um, weary. I don't, I don't know. Not weary is not really the right word, but sort of like unnerving vibes. Um, going on with the whole thing, and then yeah, it certainly seems like it's setting up to be a game ex uh, exploring um, like mental illness or something like that. Soggy heap. Is it? Oh, so this must mean Galavar one of Galavar. Is that the beach? We we haven't done um, anything for him for a while, so let's actually try and help him out. Why don't we? Um, if we can find him, that is. Oh, he's right here. Well, that's quite easy. Um, I forgot what I was going. Well, I, I don't even know what I was talking about. Let's talk about um. Let's try and transition this into another topic to talk about. I don't really know what to talk about though. Um, because I haven't got very far in Amori about anything. I, I don't have a very big backlog of um, games built up, but I'll, I'll probably be recording a bit more on the weekend to actually, you know, get some stuff done. Um, what, what, what else to really talk about? I don't really know. I, I, I can't really think of much off the top of my head. Um, the Pokemon Presents. You know, it happened yesterday. I guess we could talk a little bit more about that, about um, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Uh, you might be like, which which one are you getting? I'm not really sure. Um, maybe Violet, if I am to get one. I'm not sure if I will get one because, you know, it, it's something I've really been thinking about over the past, like, most recent years of the um, latest installation of the series. It's the fact I haven't really been playing them. <laughs> like, I've, I've bought every single one from Generation 4 and then even... After I got Generation 4, I sort of like backtracked and bought Generation 3, the remakes of Generation 2 and re... Actually, no, Generation 1 is the only one I've I've got nothing from Generation 1. Actually, do I have put Let's Go Eevee? I, I actually legitimately can't remember if I have, have Let's Go Eevee or not. I don't think I do, but <laughs> I might do. Do I? No. No, I, I don't think I don't think I do. I'm not really sure, but um Especially with the more recent and recent generations, it's just taking me like sort of longer and longer to theoretically beat them. Oh wow, we haven't got Scarlet for ages. Hello Pascal. Because like Generation 4, I beat relatively quickly. Both that and the Generation 2 remakes. Generation 5, I beat relatively quickly. Generation 6, what's that X and Y? It took me a little bit of a while, you know, I stopped for a bit when I came back to it. When Generation 7, what's <laughs> Generation 7 Sun and Moon? That I stopped for a long while and then like I came back to it and then... Actually, I haven't even finished Sun and Moon now I think about it. So that's been the longest thus far. I'm in Generation 8, Sword and Shield. I, I, I also haven't finished. I'm, I haven't even finished the last gym gym yet. Like, I'm I'm, I'm at the stage right before the final gym. And I just couldn't be bothered anymore. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just, it was like, nah, I can't really be bothered to finish this game anymore. So I feel like that might happen when I play Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, you know? It's a sort of like, I guess... It's the sort of thing where um, the Pokemon formula is, you know, formulaic to a certain degree, but you, you kind of know what to expect and what you'll get from Pokemon is the sort of same sort of thing every... It's not the same thing every iteration. I, I won't go that far, but it's the same sort of formula each iteration, and then it's just sort of um, changed a little bit each one with, like, new mechanics, new world, new Pokemon, etc, etc. And it is a very enjoyable formula, don't get me wrong. It's just sort of like, I don't know. <laughs> it's not... In my strong desire I'm supposed to play it anymore. Now, nowadays, you know, I suppose I'd much rather like draw something related to Pokemon rather than actually play something related to Pokemon. <laughs> like, um, some of my friends are playing like um, harder versions of Pokemon because they really do really like Pokemon. They, they're, they're doing like Nuzlocke challenges and um, they did like a randomizer challenge. There was one called, I think it was like Soul Link Nuzlocke, which is basically, okay, so I, I should probably explain this in case you don't know what these are. Like, uh, Nuzlocke, uh, Pokemon Nuzlocke Challenge is basically um, a hardcore version, I suppose, of Pokemon where it's something like, it's something like you can only catch your first Pokemon you see in every route or every area, and then um, if a Pokemon faints, it is removed from your party. Like, I, I suppose the way to phrase it would be there is permadeath in Pokemon. Um, I, I, I think there's other bits and pieces, like you're not meant to grind on it so you don't get like super over leveled. I think there's other things like you certain items are meant to be banned it sort of depends on what rule set you subscribe to i don't really know off the top of my head but yeah there's bits and pieces like that there's some like extraneous rules which i i don't really know much about but they are added to make the experience you know more difficult in the first place um so uh well, my friend actually, the one who he's played quite a bit of nice like he asked me he was like are you gonna play nice like for your youtube channel or that sort of thing you know because i'd watch that and i'd be like i don't know if i'm really gonna do that <laughs> He, he keeps asking me, it's sort of like a joke thing, it's not like he's pestering me about it, I like to point out, but it's sort of thing like he's asked, you know, he asked me, he's like, when are you going to do your Nuzlocke challenge? I'm like, oh, you know, who knows, maybe next year or something. Um, 
Run well, along the shore is obviously I'm not. I'm, I'm very unlikely, I would say, to do a Nuzlocke challenge. The, the only conceivable way I would do a Nuzlocke challenge is if it was like an. I don't know. Like a, a lot of these things, it's not about like I'm, I would hate doing it. It's just like a, I don't. I don't see. I'm not infused by the idea or in, interested in it, so it seems like a, a bit of a pointless use of my time. Um, but if it was like, I don't know, I was doing like a charity stream or something, it was like, it has to be a Nuzlocke, then, then I'd do a Nuzlocke or something. Um, <laughs> it, it's always how it goes. I would do it if it was for charity, but if it's just for my own recreational purposes, and then, then no, I wouldn't. <laughs> but yeah, um, and it's not because um, it's too hard or anything. It's just like, that's not really what I suppose I play Pokemon for. It's the same sort of reason I wasn't very interested in um, doing more competitive um, sort of gameplay I suppose with Super Smash Bros. That's not really what I play Super Smash Bros for. Super Smash Bros to me is a party game and that's what I play it for. You know I put the same sort of effort into it as I do like Mario Kart or like Mario Party and that sort of thing. It's, it's just all for a bit of fun. So Pokemon is sort of there where it's like I mean I, I know that's sort of part of the reason this of them um, of it being so infamous is the fact that there is a permadeath and you can argue it sort of like strengthens your bonds and creates more interesting stories and I certainly think that's true you know um, I mean it's probably used to great effect in like strategy games like XCOM or other sort of games where it has permadeath for your characters um, or what's that ca game called um Satisfactory I think there's, there's some other ones where you like things where you like build up a like uh, a colony etc etc things like that um, and where the characters aren't just sort of nameless characters, right? they are named characters. Oh, uh, Darkest Dungeon, which I think I have, but you know, I just never got around to doing it. Because Purple Death isn't, you know, isn't a challenge I want to have, I suppose, in my game. I'd rather, I'd rather it be something that I can try as many times as possible, but you know, I'm not set back every single time something goes wrong. I'd rather, it, like, start, sort of start from a, you know, I, I guess, you know, but it's just the difficulty I chase in the game. <laughs> Which is strange because, you know, I quite like strategic mechanics in the game and that sort of thing. But I guess strate there's a, there's a cut-off point. My, my maximum willingness to play strategic for strategic difficulty is a lot lower than my maximum willingness for mechanical difficulty. Because, I mean, you've seen it when I played like, things like Hollow Knight. I don't mind... I mean, but the Pavan Hollow Ness, I, I would say, I, I only did it kind of, just kind of for the sake of having like a big like finale for the end of Hollow Knight. But it was quite like tedious, I would certainly say. But it, uh, in retrospect, I think it was quite fun. And, you know, I was actually willing to do that. But I was not willing to do things like, oh, no mask no mask runs or the mask challenges, especially themselves, like, are quite annoying. <laughs> uh, you know, it's just like, yes. I'm not really sure <laughs> how to put it. I guess it's sort of like loss aversion um, in humans. Loss aversion, like uh, if you don't know what uh, that is, it's that humans really overly. I don't think I had to phrase this. Losing something for humans is way worse than the same gain. Is what I mean to say. So, like, if you made a bet, I mean, you lost five pounds. That intrinsically for humans feels way worse than the inverse of. Like, if you were in, to invert your emotions to happiness of you gaining five pounds. <laughs> so, if you were to do, like, it, it's a thing where, like, uh, if you were to ask someone on the street, be like, I'll flip a coin. If it's if it's heads, you give me five pounds. If it's tails, I'll give you ten pounds. Despite the fact that people, that's mathematically just a, a, a positive trade for you. You know, the expected value for that is positive. Um... I should be careful how I phrase that because I don't want to like misconstrue it. <laughs> it's, it's not saying that you all gain money from it. It means the expected value that you gain from it is positive. So in a mathematical sense, it'd be like, do it, <laughs> provided you could, you know, tank a risk. And, you know, most people could probably tank a risk of five pounds. Um, most people would decline it because losing five pounds feels so much worse than a gain of ten pounds, despite the fact that ten pounds is a, a higher gain. And I suppose that's, you know, you know, it sort of applies to me um, when it comes to these sort of games, games with named characters who you know, I could lose due to my own, like, bad actions or something. Misactions is perhaps the right word for things like Darkest Dungeon or things like um, Nuzlocke. Um, and that's perhaps... I wonder if that's due to how highly I rate, like, stories and characters in games and the sort of attachments I form with them. I don't want the character... I don't want the characters to, like, die or be lost. But it's not like I don't have anything against character death and, like, narrative technique or anything like that because I, li I like it when it makes sense and it feels reasonable but I don't I suppose I suppose I don't like it when it's so it feels like something by my own action because it feels like that's not the story I that should be told with that character <laughs> like I think it's cool to have like a character have like a heroic sacrifice I guess that, that's it it's because I can't control the story that I want to tell with my characters which I can when um 
I don't need to be concerned whether the character lives or they die. I can just like, if, if, if I think a character should have like a heroic death to end off a character arc or that sort of thing, in I, I get to choose when that happens, I suppose. Um, when it comes to, you know, playing Pokemon normally, but I can't do that, I suppose, in a Nuzlocke. Sometimes, you know, just freak random things happen, which is like kind of a thrill of playing it in the first place. It's just by random chance you could lose someone or just by a strategic blunder, etc., etc., etc. Some Something bad could happen and you'll lose a Pokemon partner partner and then for me I suppose that sort of ruins the story and that is intensely frustrating not from the aspect of not from a gameplay aspect of being like now I don't have a strong like Pokemon in my party anymore I, I'm more annoyed by the narrative aspect of being like you know the, the story that I was building up with this Pokemon now it's just come to an end and it feels like very unfulfilling <laughs> I suppose but then at the same time you know sometimes the, you know narrative deaths and things like that aren't fulfilling or narrative like writing out of stories that's kind of a point of them they're meant to be heart-wrenching in the first place but I suppose that's then that sort of circles back around to my expectations of game in the first place when I play Pokemon that's not what I'm signing up for I'm not signing up for like a heart-wrenching you know like really bitter you know melancholic sort of story necessarily i'm just here to have a good time like a, a friendly fun like adventure through the world of like childish glee i suppose <laughs> so that's sort of like a different expectations so maybe i just haven't found the right game for me with that sort of hard mode with that sort of mechanical sacrifice in it yet which i'd really latch onto <laughs> but it's just a thing i'm just you know like uh, to be fair i have this war of mine and maybe that's something which would be more interesting i suppose because it's sort of setting up that gritty reality in first place and maybe darkest dungeon but i just feel like mechanically i'm not interested in it i'm not interested in losing huge amounts of progress i suppose due to my failures <laughs> i'm 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 interested in not gaining progress due, due to my own incompetence but losing like things setting me back i guess it's sort of it's something my brain just sort of goes like um the time where i've now invested has now been wasted i suppose it's sort of like a sound, sound cost fallacy but you know instead of being a sound cost fallacy of now now i got to invest even more time to get even stronger etc etc my my mind just goes i didn't really <laughs> It's not enjoyable, and then I would just stop. <laughs> but I don't know, because I shouldn't... Oh, how on, how on earth did anyone lose a book up there? That's, that's honestly incredible. I, I shouldn't, like, sort of count my chickens before a hatch, because I don't. I just genuinely don't know. I don't know if that's really what I think about them, because I just haven't played most of these games before. Like, I haven't played, you know, Darkest Dungeon. I've seen it been played, and I love the aesthetic of it, and I love, like, the feel of it. And I feel like I would like, like certain aspects of it, but, you know, the, the permadeath and all that sort of thing, I'm just sort of like... I'm not sure if I want to play it, necessarily. And, I don't know. Oh, we, we know this now. Because we've got this book before. This is Phoebe's book. How on earth did you lose it up there, Phoebe? I have no idea. But, um, let's go hunt her, hunt, hunt her out. Um, we haven't found whoever's our crafter for today, have we? Uh, I don't... Oh, no, we haven't seen Lily walking around on battle, so who knows. So, yeah. Um, sh I don't know. Like, strategic sacrifices. I suppose it sort of ties into that sort of RPG element of, you know, hoarding all your items. I, I am very much someone who does that. Sometimes it's by, you know, sort of like um, that that meme sort of idea, that ideation of being like, I can't waste this, this resource, it's too precious, I'll, have to, I'll save it for when I really need, need it. But sometimes it is for a bit of an artificial challenge to a certain degree. So I'm not against my own artificial challenges, it's just like, I don't know, I guess... I guess when the mechanics of a story blend together in a way that doesn't feel cohesive, like the way it does in Nuzlocke is when it ends up being frustrating for me because I'm not saying you can't make a cohesive story out of it out of the events which happened if you played a Nuzlocke challenge but it's sort of like you're doing it retroactively rather than in the moment it feel it doesn't feel like um, a cohesive story while I'm playing it and thus would not be enjoyable that's my assumption again as I'd like to preface with this with I haven't actually played a Nuzlocke so I don't really know if that's how my brain would work for this sort of thing Oh, first of all, Anton, we've, we've never learned this customization. You know, that's because, I wonder if it's because today is, um, uh, what was it called? Qi Xi. I, th I think that's what it's called um, in Chinese, which is basically um, the Tanabata fe Festival, if you're more familiar with like anime than the Japanese one, but it's the Chinese original festival, which inspired Tanabata. Um, and it's basically the same story. I've, t I've talked about it before, you know. I can't remember their names, but it's like some shepherd and then some like we we t tailor, weaver. I, I forget what she is. I mean, it can only meet on today. It's like a second Valentine's Day or something like that. Um, actually, oh, oh gosh, I didn't mean to pick it up. I, I was just thinking. I was like, why didn't Audi ask us about the fact that we had an item to give? She just immediately did the crafting thing, which I don't know if that normally happens. But anyway, where are you, Phoebe? 
Are you are, Phoebe. Yeah, so um, basically, I'm not likely to play a Nuzlocke anytime soon. Although I do like the idea of a Nuzlocke challenge. Like, I, I think it's intriguing, is probably what I'll say. I'm just like, oh, that seems like a very interesting idea. I like the idea of the mechanics behind it, but it's just those mechanics themselves don't appeal to me. And oh, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe there's stuff from Nuzlocke. And um, the other challenges that my friends are doing, like, we're doing like a randomizer, which is basically you play Pokemon, but all the Pokemon are randomized. So you might like walk into the first. The first grass and you might be like oh you know that's a bit surprising i found like a, a piplup here or something and then you walk into the next one and it was like whoa it's like um registeel or something it's just you know all, all the pokemon have just sort of like been randomly scattered about and like switched around for whatever reason and then um the final thing which i uh, okay fossils hit rocks fossils hit rocks catch bugs that is doable uh fossils hit rocks catch bugs fossils hit rock catch bugs okay um was uh, the Soul Link one, which is basically two of them simultaneously play the game and then all their Pokemon are linked. So the first Pokemon they both catch same, in the same area, and those Pokemon are now linked together. So if one perishes, then the other perishes at the same time. And there's also like rules where you can't have... In your party, you can't have duplicate typings or something. Um, and then, yeah, there's some other things. So it... That one I found find most interesting, one, because it's a cooperative one, and two, it's also got like a sort of puzzle element where you have to try and sort of figure out how you're going to build your team together. You know, it's be like, oh, I really want to put like the steel type Pokemon in my party, but this steel Pokemon's connected to a water Pokemon, and you know, I've already got a water Pokemon, no, you've already got a water Pokemon in your party, is it worth sacrifice, is it worth giving up that water Pokemon for me getting this Pokemon? Like, do how does the balance of a team composition go? Is it worth it in this case? Like, you already got that strong electric Pokemon, maybe that's fine, etc, etc, etc. And, you know, I, I did watch them play it for a decent amount. Um, I don't actually know if they ever beat it, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I mean, that's not meant to be a shout, like, um, me dissing them. It, it's very, very hard, from what I can tell. I think they're doing it with, like, heart, gold, soul, silver, so, you know, it's not surprising it was so hard. That's a very long game <laughs> in of itself, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know if they actually ever beat it or not. It's sort of like, um, remains a mystery to this day, but, um, so, yeah, that, I'm, I'm definitely never going to do that. that. That's just, like, <laughs> it's, I, I'd much rather just play a whole new, experience a whole new different game, rather than, it, it comes back to what I was saying before, I tend to not really like replaying games all that often. I'd rather experience a new game rather than play the same game I played before with like different sort of like um, modifiers on, if you get me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really one to replay through games. I think the only game I've replayed through that I can think of off the top of my head is um, Plants and Zombies, but you know, a lot of the time I replayed through that was when I didn't have internet connection. It was sort of my go to game. Um, and also, I was much younger then. I didn't have as many games. Now, now I've got too many games to choose from in the first place. So, you know, that's why I'm sort of just like, that's why I haven't revisited like any of these games which I played <laughs> on the channel. That sort of thing. I'm just like, I've, I'd rather play a different game than go back to some of these previous ones. Not to say that these previous ones are bad necessarily, but just sort of like, um, I don't even know which ones, which ones I would revisit. Like, what even could I revisit? I guess I could revisit Spear of Pharaoh, but I'd rather do that after all three other new people have been added. I could go back to Bug Fables because I know that got a new patch. Um, I don't know what other ones are. Yeah, so um, I guess, <laughs> you know, you thought I was going to be talking about Pokemon Nuzlocke, but it sort of just like turns out in disguise. This, was, this entire thing was just me talking about um, replaying games all over again, which is a very common thing I end up talking about for really no apparent reason. Um, yeah, uh, what else can I say about Pokemon Nuzlocke? Is that person who's doing those Pokemon Nuzlocke comics, are they still making those comics and because I found them very, very entertaining. I, I can't remember what it's called. You, you should know the comics. Like, hold on, let's look up. Nuzlocke like Pokemon comics. I'll probably be able to be able to find it. Let's see. Nick Franco. That's not it. Not you. It's like an ongoing series. It's it's like what, what's it called? Sorry, a little bit of a pause, but I do know I was talking about uh, a petty Nuzlocke just before um, I paused. Uh, we, we need to catch bugs, don't we? We got we got about five minutes. We can catch five bugs in five minutes, probably. Um, yeah, a petty Nuzlocke. That was a comic um, I used to read. Well, I say used to read. I'm not, <laughs> it, it might not have been updating by the time I read it. I, can't, I honestly can't remember. Maybe it was. No, I, I feel like it was. I feel like it was part way into the Heart Gold um, Soul Silver. 
So I'm not saying you can't write um, cohesive stories from the Nazok thing itself, but you know, I guess I just probably don't think I will find the gameplay of doing the actual Nazok itself uh, particularly uh, not challenging, sorry. I, I think it would be challenging, particularly um, enticing. Is my sort of apprehension from doing it in the first place. And, you know, sort of, it, it's basically a load of different factors coming together to not um, make, uh, to make, um, what you call it? Um, Nuzlocke challenges not seem particularly interesting to me. <laughs> oh, of course, your mileage may vary. Maybe maybe you absolutely love doing Nuzlocke challenges because you love playing Pokemon, which is fair enough. More power to you. <sighs> Apparently, I'm just terrible at Animal Crossing now. <laughs> More power to you. It's just um, not my sort of thing. But they, they are pretty fun to watch, you know. <laughs> I suppose the, the high drama of it all is rather entertaining. Oh, we've, oh, we've completely filled up your island with a lily of a valley. So I guess we'll have to start doubling up. Um... The whole... Um, maybe another time. I think this is too close to the end of the episode. Sorry, Biscuit. Uh, I'm not sure where we should start doubling up from, to be perfectly honest. Oh, we should have tried to catch... Yeah, there we go. Um, what was I going to say? No, so, oh yeah. Um, I, th I think it's entertaining to watch just for the drama of it, I suppose. Or like, dra drama quote quote of it, where it's just like, oh, you know, that was close, you know. And I suppose, you know, I think part of the reason is also because um, I tend to be quite um, pragmatic when it comes to these sort of things. I think part of me would probably not be able to enjoy him. Doing a Nasaka as much because I'd probably take it far too like strategically, literally, with being like you know everything must be very carefully planned out, practiced because I don't want to lose any Pokemon or whatever. And uh, that sort of like sucks the fun out, is doesn't it? But there's no excitement there if you know things are going to happen because things are going to work out because you you know like grinded really high level. You spend like ages and every single move sort of deliberating, and which you know some people would certainly like to play that way. And I do kind of to a certain extent. I don't think I, I would like playing that much all the time, um, to that extent that much all the time, but you know, in like, important moments, I don't see why not. What? Really? Alright then. Um, but at least, at least my uh, my friend who really likes Nuzlocke, he, he's a bit more, you know, sort of like, um, laissez-faire with his attitude. Just being like, ah, let's send it, you know. He, he wants things to be done quickly, quickly, you know. Not necessarily with like a sort of safety net behind it. So he'll take risks and that sort of thing. And sometimes those risks, risks backfire, which very much do sort of add to the drama of a situation, making him go, oh no, as he like loses a, a Pokemon to like um, a bad mistake or a move or like a random critical hit, etc, etc, etc. That I think adds to the fun of it. So I guess, you know, Nuzlocke's a sort of thing where it seems to be a lot more fun to watch probably than it actually is to play for me personally. Um, but even then, I'm, I'm not, not like, um, I don't really go out seeking Nuzlocke sort of like, um, videos or anything like that, I'm, I only watch it because my friends are playing it, to be perfectly honest. And I do find it entertaining to a certain degree. At least, I found the Soul Link one very entertaining. It was, uh, as I said, two of my friends playing, you know, together, they, they linked up and, you know, their Pokemon attacked each other. The amount of drama that happened about was <laughs> hilarious to say. Not not like, not like actually like friendship damaging drama. I, I mean like a narrative drama, drama in that sort of sense. Um, it seemed very, very difficult though. <laughs> and, you know, D difficult in a way which I don't think I'd find it entertaining because basically the long and short of um, Nuzlocke challenges for me poisonly. But you know, y you might absolutely love them, in which case I'd say more power to you. You know, if if you vibe, if you vibe hard with Nuzlocke challenges, then by all means continue to play those Nuzlocke challenges and you know, do whatever with them. Make them even harder if you so desire. <laughs> you know, be a bit more like um. What's his name? Smallant, that's his name, right? Um, the person who does all these like really wacky Pokemon challenges. I, I like, I read some of them, not read, <laughs> watched some of his uh, videos. Um, honestly, very interesting. Like uh, the one way, you know, you like don't take damage or whatever. Found that very insane and things like that. But you know, that, that sort of thing isn't to me, <laughs> isn't for me. I'd rather just experience like a new game, I suppose, rather than trying to perfect a specific challenge of this one. But everyone's got sort of um, their different uh, opinions and things that they like to do. So anyway, if you haven't watching, thank you very much. It's been Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've been Dear Darling. Any likes, comments, subscriptions, shares are greatly appreciated. Join me, Dear Darling, Discord. Follow me on Twitter down below. Hope we see each other again. But for now, it's our farewell. So until next time, bye bye for now.